Hello everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. In Connor's doctor's office, Chelsea tells her she isn't sure she can do this. Deal with Connor's OCD and treatment. The doctor reassures her. Chelsea tells her that things are different for her because of her past, and she's worried it will make things difficult for her little boy, if it hasn't already. Chelsea opens up about her past suicide attempt and explains a friend stopped her. She sought help and has been in therapy ever since. The doctor thinks she should be proud. Chelsea is proud but the guilt. She's starting to feel she's passed something horrible onto her son. It's overwhelming. In Connor's new dorm, Adam asks why he wanted to move rooms in the middle of the school year. Connor shrugs that it's no big deal. Adam asks if there was a problem with another student. Connor says, nothing like that. It was me. Adam asks what that means. Connor couldn't stay there because of me and my craziness. Adam reminds him he's not crazy and is the greatest kid ever. Connor's not buying it. Adam assures him they'll fix this. He asks again why he wanted to change rooms. Connor says, it was the room number. It was 23. Two and three add up to five and that's bad. The kid next reveals that he knows Adam liked to gamble. Adam says it was another lifetime ago. Connor applies hand sanitizer and they discuss the retreat. Adam thinks it would be a relief to get help. Connor's scared. Adam assures Connor that he and Chelsea will do everything they can to make it easier for him, like getting the room numbers in advance. Connor worries he wouldn't know where anything was and would be alone. Adam tells him it will be all right. Let's just see how this all plays out. At the Abbott Mansion, Kyle and Summer agree there's definitely more to Claire's story than she and Victoria were willing to share. Summer notes that Claire was sweet and very good with Harrison. Kyle thinks it was a nice change of pace to see the boy smile. Summer isn't saying no to interviewing Claire, but before they really consider it, they need to do some research. Kyle's in total agreement and notes that she may not be interested in the job. It's worth a shot. Summer will do some digging and see if she can come up with the parts of the story that Victoria didn't tell them. They'll go from there. Nick arrives at the ranch and hollers for his family members. Victor appears and Nick asks, where is everyone? Victor tells him they've gone to confront Jordan. Nick hates this idea, and Victor says he agrees, but Nikki needed to take her power back. Claire and Victoria wanted to go with her. He disagrees with the whole thing. Nick mutters about the strong women in this family. At the dungeon, Jordan carries on inside the locked room as Larry the security guard, Nikki, Claire, and Victoria walk up to the door. Victoria smirks about how Jordan will react to seeing them. Jordan bangs on the door and calls for help frantically. She steps back when the door opens and gasps, oh, thank God. Nikki appears with the others behind her and tells her, sorry to burst your bubble, but this isn't a rescue party. Jordan screams at them to get out and Nikki mocks her. The women file inside and leave Larry outside the door. Jordan crabs about this ridiculous tea party and they needle her for breaking her nails. Nikki sneers that it isn't very nice to be locked up against your will, is it? Jordan asks if they've come to gloat. Nikki can't think of a better way to spend the afternoon. Jordan tells the women there will never be closure. She'll haunt them for the rest of their lives. Victoria sniffs about her being dramatic. Claire says she's always been that way, but it's much less effective now. Jordan taunts Nikki and accuses her of being drunk. Nikki says she hasn't had a drop in days. You may have stolen my sobriety, but I've taken it back. Victoria adds, just like you stole my daughter, but now she's back where she belongs. Claire interjects, and like you stole my life, but I'm getting it back with a family that loves me. Jordan calls them stupid for strutting around and worrying about what she did to them. Do they really think that will solve their problems? Turning, she says, it won't be that easy, Nikki. Nikki taunts Jordan for being the one stupid enough to be tricked into getting locked into this basement. 
Jordan predicts nothing but tragedy and doom for all of them, including Claire, the ungrateful brat. Victoria snaps, don't you talk to my daughter. Jordan taunts that she's full of hate. I raised her and I loved her. Do you trust her? Do you, Victoria? Because you really couldn't love her if you don't trust her. Claire Seethes, you used me. Jordan needles, who knows if she will turn on you. Victoria won't doubt her daughter.